Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going through the Deja V Crochet Basket. Really cool. Geometrics are currently in style here in 2020 and uh, we're gonna be going through this. We're gonna start with the base and then work our way up the side. So we have to get our base done first. The neat thing about this particular one that we're gonna use is split half double crochet. It sounds like a big thing but in actual fact how you get started matters and then once you get more comfortable with the stitch it's just easier. So let me show you what it looks like first like as far as the base and then I'm gonna build up the base with you to do the side. So let me show you that first. So this is a split half double crochet and this is a great way to thicken up your yarn. So if you're ever thinking about a stitch and you don't want a double strand, um, doing this split half double crochet is a way to do it. Getting started is a bit slow I have to tell you but once you get started then it becomes a lot easier. So you're gonna notice when I'm doing this is that you have to dive in between the legs of the stitch when you're going to do that. So it gets a little bit tight in there. So what I like to do is that I like to go in and I pull the one strand aside and then I dive right in when I go to do that. So you'll see me do that. So on page number two it is the diagram on which we're gonna be able to follow but the key element is that once you get the base done which this is, here is the base it's a matter of getting your stitch counts right so that you get the whole revolution around this thing in order to make it work. So everything is really set to, the, to that. So what I'm gonna do for you is that I'm gonna get you started on the base and then you can just join me here. The base here took me about maybe an hour uh, just a little bit over an hour to do and you'll see it's nice and tight and it looks really good at least to me. So without further ado let's get started here on the base. Just as full transparency I've already done the base in advance. I've done my advanced homework. So I'm going to be using a secondary color, the Woodberry color just like you see. So I'm gonna teach how to do the base with this because it's currently not being used and I don't wanna cut my yarn here. So once you get the base done we're gonna carry on with that yarn and do some revolutions around in order to get our counts done right. So let's officially now get started and sorry about that. So to get started leave a longer tail and you wanna create a slip knot. So this is classified what level as intermediate. I would agree with that one. So we're gonna put it onto your hook. It's an eight millimeter size L and you want to uh, chain 33 but I'm not gonna do that because it's a simple stitch. So I'm just gonna say I'm gonna do 10. So let's just do 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Now we're gonna go across this row so you're gonna have a total of 33. So get your 33 just put me on hold for a second and then join me back here. And for those that are ready to go we're gonna go second chain from the hook and we're gonna half double crochet. I have to stress to you this half double crochet you're about to put in, in the back hump only. I would recommend to you that you're just a little bit looser than you probably normally would be. You'll be thanking yourself later. That's all I'm saying because you have to jam your hook. If you turn it around you have to jam your hook in between the legs of the stitch and because it's the first time doing it for yourself probably and it's the first time in the project that we're doing it those legs are a little tight. So you want to just be a little bit more relaxed with your half double crochet. So going all the way across just half double crochet and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So when you get all the way across and look how relaxed I am. <laughs> Trust me I'm relaxed. So what I want to do is that I want to turn my hook. So we're gonna do the split half double crochet for the first time and I'm telling you most people will quit on this row. Don't quit. Just be patient. So what you wanna do whenever you start a new row with this one here you wanna chain only one even though it's a split half double crochet. And do you see those two legs right here? That's where we're gonna play. So let's look for the legs right there. See how tight it is in there? Oh my God. It's not always gonna be that tight. It's just because it's the starting for the very first time. So they're in. So you're just gonna go in and you wanna split the legs of that stitch. So what I do is that I kinda just use my hook and I pull the one out of the way and I just dive in right to the back of the project between the legs of that stitch and then I half double crochet. So notice I wrap the hook first. Okay. So now we're gonna go in here. So do you see it? It's right there. It's tight. So just pull and if, you, and if you don't think you need to pull and you can just dive right in and go for it. But um, this row is slow and you just gotta take your time. So I could edit the video and say oh my god it just took me a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time. Just make sure you split those legs and you have double crochet. It's not gonna be that tight for the remaining of the project. So just use the hook, pull the one strand to the side and just dive. 
again you'll find your own way. So all you're just gonna do is this all the way to the end. The secret is the last one of the going across. So if you chained 33 like you were supposed to you will have only 32 stitches when you get all the way across. What I would recommend to you is just count it the first time you go across. Make sure that you did have your 32 and then I would count it on the next row and just kind of take a mental note where you stuck your hook on the very last stitch in order to maintain that. Now when I first did this project I actually went between the stitches by accident instead of between the legs which actually looked pretty awesome if you ask me um, but it wasn't what the pattern was asking for. So the very last one here you wanna split the last legs. So I chained 10, do you remember that? So how many stitches should there be? There should be a total of nine. So let's see if I'm right. So the last one always looks a little bit off but it's not. So let's see if there's nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So then I have the right number of stitches. So when you start the next row you're gonna turn your work and only chain one. Now you will notice see how the legs are a lot bigger. They're a lot bigger than it was before right? So the first one here you gotta split the legs. Okay so split it. So wrap the hook and split and just work your way across. So if you wanna just pull it, the one strand out of the way and then dive in, I find it's a lot faster to do that than it is to kinda stick your hook through those legs. So just kinda pull and dive in. And you're gonna do that all the way across and I would take a mental note again on the very last stitch that you do to make sure that you're getting it in the right one. So once I verified that for myself where, where I knew I was sticking the hook I just maintained it for the whole thing and then I got the whole base done. I used a different hook as well than this one. This one is much better than what I was using. So I'm finding myself a little faster. If you think this is not fast enough <laughs> um, it's a lot faster than the other sample I was doing. So you split the legs right in the final and then that's it. So just count make sure I have ten or I have nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn your work and you're gonna do that. So you wanna keep doing this until you have a length of 12 inches. So it's gonna be 12 from here all the way to the top and once you get your 12 done then you're done. And then what we're going to do then at that point is that we're gonna don't fasten off and then we're gonna circle around. So put me on hold, you know, grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, juice, water, whatever and then meet me back and do your work and then meet me back here and then we'll take you around the circle. So eventually you'll have your 12 inches in the length and you're gonna notice that the width is wider than it is in this direction. It doesn't really matter. It, that's just the way it is. So what I would recommend to you is get another piece of yarn, two pieces and look at the side edging and fold it directly in half and pinch it and I want you to apply a stitch marker to where you pinched. This will help you greatly and you're only gonna leave it there for the first round. And then just kind of follow it along and see where it is on this side. So our goal on the side edge is it says to equally space 28 stitches on the, on the sides. And the reason why I'm putting in the stitch marker is that if I'm going across and I'm just equally spacing I have a problem with adding too many stitches at the beginning and then I end up just kind of like speeding through the end other side and it's not balanced. So I know that if this is the halfway point I need to get 14 stitches in be, uh, by this point and the other 14 should go in after. So it gives me a way to break down the pattern for when I'm going around. So that's completely up to you and then the side, uh, the top edge and the bottom edge they're both 32 um, stitches across so that's not something that you have to worry about. It's just these side edges. So let's do the first round and we're going to begin and we're gonna keep the same color that we just finished up with so we we're not fastening off and then we're gonna continue around. So we're gonna turn our work and we are gonna do a half double crochet in each of the stitch. So we're not doing a split for this time. So when we go to start we're only gonna chain one and just essentially just go to where you normally would go with just into a regular stitch for half double crochet and you're gonna work across the top edge. And I'll see you at the end of this and then we're gonna carry on and go this way and then and basically get ourselves all the way back. So just half double crochet across the one edge so far and then just hold for me and, and I'll be right back. So now I've just come all the way across so that I did verify that there is 32 half double crochets going across 
and now we're gonna go down the first edge. So remember what I said, by the time we get to the stitch marker there needs to be um, a total of 14 half double crochets. So we have to squeeze that in. So you could either look at the stitch work and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So you can see that it's almost every uh, part of this could be that. So you just gotta stretch it out a little bit. So you're not gonna add anything to the corners. You're just gonna immediately just jump down the side and just start adding them in. So you're gonna wanna count. So 1 and then 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and then 11, 12, 13 and 14. So 14 takes me there. I'm just gonna jump over and do the other 14. So that will give me 28. So I'm just gonna jump over it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 takes me right there. So then I wanna turn it and we're doing the bottom side and we wanna make sure we get 32 across there and then we're gonna do the same on the other side. So I will leave those two sides for you and make sure that you keep your counts. When you get all the way back around in the last one here and this is my last section of 14. I got my stitch marker in there. I want to join it then to the beginning half double crochet that I started with. So we're just gonna slip stitch and now we're gonna treat this in the rounds. So I would turn it up like this so that the right side is facing up so the good side is facing you and we're gonna do one more round before we start the fun stuff. We're gonna chain up one and now we're gonna simply just go around this thing and we're going to start the split half double crochet once again. So starting in the first one just split those legs. It'll be easier than when you st first started doing the chain work because you were going around existing work. So just place one split half double crochet in each stitch going all the way around and then we're gonna just join it when you go and then we're gonna begin doing the graph work after that. When you come all the way back around you are just going to then slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet, the split half double crochet when you go to do that. So don't count that chain one as a stitch. So now what we have to do is you'll see that it's kind of uh, bowling up on you now which is awesome. That's what we want and now we're gonna introduce the second color but we have to go play with that diagram first. So let's just go do that first and then meet you back here in a moment. So we're gonna be playing with this diagram. You'll notice it's in sets of 12. So we did 120 stitches all the way around. If you were keeping count as what we were doing it will work out for you. You can always cheat the system if you have to if you're off by one in order to get it to work the first time. So we're gonna start off. We're gonna keep the main color. So the chain one is not shown here uh, when we're going to do this. So we're gonna do these rows here and then on row number 12 here we're then after row number 12 we're then gonna go in the opposite direction so that the line is gonna go in there. So if you don't wanna do that and you wanna keep the lines going the other way or all the way up it's up to you. You are the artist after all. So the first uh, color is going to be the main color and then we're gonna introduce the new color here for two. So everything is in set to two. So when you go to start up the next round the first two here will then be the, the main color and then two and two. So it's just a matter of keeping uh, look, uh, keeping the look. So it's just, I think it's just a matter of getting yourself started and you'll see it uh, materialize before your very eyes and then you won't really have to count too much. You just follow exactly what you see. So without further ado, let's begin. There is really no written instructions on how to do this. For example, um, like uh, word for word. So you need to follow the diagram because that's what it's telling you to do there. You're gonna read the chart from right to left even if your left hand is so still continue to read it in that direction. So let's begin to do this section next. So let's begin to do the next section. Take this new color that you wanna play with. Just lay it down on top. Don't tie it into any knots at all. 
and when we go to chain one we're going to do the first stitch only. So the first is a split but watch when we go to do it. So we go to split and the new color when you go to pull through has to be the other color. So this here is the top of this stitch, this color here. So in order to get the next top to be the next color you're just going to put the other one onto the hook and pull through. And so this is the roof of the next stitch if you look at it from that perspective. So you're going to drop the main color and then just use this color for the next two stitches. But watch what I'm gonna do. When I go to do that I wanna make sure that the other color just stays on top of the line and pull through and finish this one completely and then the next one same color is going through but the one after this has to be the new color like it has to be the main color. So we're gonna drop that one and take this one and finish it because this is the color of the next top of the stitch. You wanna keep things relatively snug. You don't wanna over tighten anything and then you're gonna do the next two colors or the next two stitches with the other color. So one and two and noticing that I'm carrying it up underneath and so now that we know the other color has to be on top. So you wanna be very strategic when you're laying these down. The best way to do this is to keep the one ball in front of you here and the other ball over to the side and therefore it shouldn't tangle on you too much. So you're gonna, do, oh sorry I have to finish it with the new color. So it's a matter of just getting the rhythm. I haven't done this kind of stitch in a while. So it's just a matter of getting used to it. So the next two are this red. Make sure that you are pulling on these to make the stitches look even. And so the top of the house has to be white for the next stitch. So just grabbing the white. And you're gonna go all the way around in the same manner. So what I'll do is I'll do that and then I'll meet you back here in just a moment. I'm making it look more difficult than it probably is. It's a matter of just getting used to it and it's a matter of just closing my mouth and just concentrating as well. So it should look like groups of two just like that. When you get all the way back around you're gonna wanna slip stitch it to the end. So I got the last one in. So the white happens to be the last one of this particular round and the first one of this. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the first half double crochet. You're going to notice also on the inside you can see the colors are carrying but on the outside it looks pretty perfect. And so now you're gonna begin another round. So continuing along, so white is gonna be the first two colors. So you're gonna chain up one first and you are just going to split the first one. So the white is one and then you're gonna go into the next one which happens to be red and you're gonna split that and that's the second one and then the next two. So you're gonna drop and the next two will be red. So this shifting over will cause it to start to move over a little bit. So you're still working in sets of two all the way around and you will notice then it'll start traveling up on an angle. And that's all you gotta do for this pattern. So it's around round number 12 is that when you stop going off in this direction then you start going back in the other direction. So that means that you're gonna start the color um, and the colors will just shift back. It's pretty self explanatory if you look at the diagram. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this with you. I think that's pretty good and I'm gonna continue to, I want actually this for my dining room table. Uh, the cat will chance, <laughs> probably the cat will probably sit on it for sure. And uh, you wanna make sure that you're still continuing to pull those up nice and tight uh, as you're going around and just a matter of just following the pattern as you, you can see it. So please enjoy this pattern. It's actually really not hard. It's just a matter of just putting in the time in it. Um, I was actually on um, a home decor website and they had a basket like this for like 40 bucks. And uh, this yarn here is oh, not 40 bucks. And I just thought it was like wow I can have something that's like home deck oriented without having to pay that kind of price. So it's a neat idea and you will also notice because you're carrying up over top of these strands is that it'll feel thicker because you are actually going right up over top an additional strand that's not, wasn't there when it was doing the base. So it's a really neat idea and this is kind of cool. So uh, please enjoy this pattern and we will see you again next time and uh, I will see you at the end. I'll just post a photo on what this looks like. 
When I last left you I did this in my homework last night. Now I didn't go all the way to the height. I wish I would have kind of thought about this in advance. It's actually a lot taller than I thought. So you know if I wanted to go any more than I could. So the last two rounds that you're gonna do you're gonna exit the final um, other color that we want and we wanna grab the main color that we have and then we're just going to chain one and just do a, a split half double crochet all around for two rounds and then that's it. And so then that will bring balance to the pattern. It's actually not a hard pattern to be able to do and I, f I, I think if I was to say one thing to you that I regret that I didn't do I think I wish I was a little tighter with this pattern so I think I would have reefed on the yarn a little bit more in order to get it to be a little bit more rigid but again once you put yarn and stuff and all that kind of jazz in the middle then I think it would be pretty awesome too. So you just go two rounds of split half double crochet with the main color and then you're done and then you can have a basket that looks like that. So until next time have a good one and we hope to see you again right here on the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com.